The governor still has a number of bills to sign, including legislation increasing rules and potential penalties for organizations registering people to vote. Yeah, it comes as New Six has learned Governor DeSantis' election police are contacting people who have worked for these organizations. The state says it is making sure Florida's elections are secure, but critics call it a form of voter suppression. Investigator Lewis Bolden joins us now live in studio, breaking down both sides of this debate. Lewis. Well, Matt and Ginger, Governor Ron DeSantis created the Office of Election Crime and Security, a.k.a. the Election Police, even after praising Florida's election process in 2020. The Election Police have been heavily scrutinized after arresting 20 people across the state for illegally voting. But judges have dismissed six of the cases and five others accepted plea deals with no jail time. Now an Orange County woman accuses the office of trying to intimidate those who register people to vote. I just, it concerned me deeply. When Ryan Wagner recently got this voicemail message. Hello, this is Inspector McCormick with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. I'm trying to reach Ms. Wagner. She says it immediately caused concern. He indicated that he was calling me in regards to a voter registration matter. About the uh, organized Florida uh, Education Fund. Um, I'm working a uh, case unrelated uh, to that organization, but um, I'd like to try to see if I can uh, speak to you about um, just if you had any kind of uh, training practices and, and things like that uh, that you put in place for your, your canvassers. I haven't worked at Organized Florida since 2018, so immediately it just kind of sent off red flags for me. Organized Florida was a nonprofit that described itself as a community organization dedicated to fighting for justice in marginalized communities. The organization also prided itself on registering people to vote and encouraging people to vote with Facebook posts. Wagner says she hasn't worked for the organization for five years, so being contacted by an FDLE employee raises questions for her. So again, for me, it just felt like harassment. Wagner questioned whether McCormick was actually with FDLE because when she called him, she says he told her he had been to her home trying to find her. When she asked him to verify the address. First of all, you didn't show up to the correct address. You showed up to my parents' address. And that was deeply alarming to me. And he indicated he got my information from the state. News 6 contacted FDLE and they confirmed via email, Mr. McCormick is a sworn inspector in the election crimes unit. When we requested copies of his investigative reports, we were told the public records section has our request and they don't have an ETA for us because they have several hundred public records requests in their queue. It is voter suppression through and through, but just by another means. Matt Letha Burnett is with the Southern Poverty Law Center, which Wagner contacted after getting the call. And so the election police has stepped in and sought to intimidate these organizations from doing what they were designed to do, give people access to the ballot. Burnett also points to Senate Bill 7050, which recently passed. It increases fines against third-party voter registration organizations to $250,000 per calendar year for certain violations. I feel like this is happening to a lot of people and people don't know what to do about it. The Florida Department of State sent us a statement reading in part, they believe the Office of Election Crimes and Security has been very successful thus far in building confidence in law-abiding citizens that the rule of law is enforced in Florida. We will post the complete statement with this story on ClickOrlando.com. Matt and Ginger. Lewis Bolton, thank you very much.